it's very it's very hard to give. Um, sorry, I, 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 there is no question. No? So I just have to be like a statement. It is very difficult to say what architecture is for the world today globally because the. There is very there is big difference from one place to another around the world. I think in Europe, architecture is very it's very much about uh, squeezing the best of what we already have. Uh, in in the Far East country and in growing country, is building somehow the future of the cities. So then there is this, all these areas in between, like Albania, no? which are growing a lot, but at the same time are very close to the European culture of building, which maybe make them, put them in a very good position, trying to make the best, both of this like uh, ecologic, recycled culture, but also this attraction for modernity and future, which is important to bring energy in the life of architects. The architect in Italy for many decades, for many years, have been seen as a very ideological uh, word. So, so trying to bring their ideas to the society rather than interpreting the needs of society. After these architects I had a very hard time and now they're trying to regain a position in society by getting much closer to community, trying to understand what the real city needs, trying to have a dialogue with society which will give us back some presence because we really have to rebuild and improve the level of discussion between the architectural discipline and, and our communities. I have to confess that I was on the jury for that Biennale. So my experience is, I think that the team was alluding to a political topic, but in a very vague and open way. So in the end, the Biennale was gaining attention from the press for this kind of political subsense, but in reality, it was a very open survey of what is produced today by architects all around the world. So I think that the, the political topic was more used for communication, where the real contents of the Biennale was more about information. I think it's very, very hard to say a common denominator because architecture in Taiwan or architecture in China has a, a strongly technocratic role, uh, whereas here it's more about the social and the improvement of the situation in our cities, our societies, our communities. The Balkans, as I said before, are a very good field of experimentation because they get both the, the will to get into the future as quick as possible, but at the same time they have a substratus, they have a feedback of architectural culture that can help them to, to bring improvement in a landscape which is already very much built. I mean, one architect, when he's by himself, has no impact, you know? can do a nice building but cannot change the world. So the, historically what we learned from the 20th century that it's very important that the architect speak to themselves, that they create a network, then they discuss, but at the same time we will never go back to this 20th century idea that we see the political scenario like uh, the architectural scenario just like the political one. The modernist versus the traditionalist, the vernacular, against the organics. Today, the solutions are very individual, and everyone has his own solution, but we have to be able, and networking is very important, to share ideas, to improve everybody's, everyone's ideas, and to create a language we can talk about. But then we will not have teams, we will not have tendencies. We will have a lot of interesting solutions. Well, of course, the normal catalyst for the present and future cities is ecology. But ecology can be an empty, is so present that it can become an empty word. So we have to break up the box. We have to break the box, open the box of ecology to turn it into real things. It could be, I mean, the, the idea of recycling existing buildings, which is very important in our countries. It can be the idea of improve, improving the way people use the public space improving education, so architecture has to work in these fields, trying to open the big, strong words like sustainability, ecology, which sometimes mean nothing, and to break them into real issues. I 
I think uh, the Future Architecture Platform is a beautiful project because it's looking into the energies of the youngest people. We know the, all the, the older generation, the more mature generation of architects have all this burden from the 20th century about styles, about being modernist, anti-modernist. The young architects have a freer mind, have a fresher mind that Future Architecture Platform has very good opportunities to fuel, promote and support.